The conclusion to the Diablo-like Van Helsing trilogy is more of the same killing and snarky tete-a-tetes like the previous games, but with a much wider range of classes than ever before. With the story coming to an end, Van Helsing 3 iterates a little on its successful formula, but takes a few steps back with classes that feel far too similar to each other and a confusing UI for newcomers. There's just about enough improvement here to make it a worthwhile conclusion, but previous players are going to feel the lack of certain features. The opening of the game sees you hot on the trail of the mysterious Prisoner 7 as the city of Borgovia struggles to recover from the Civil War. That isn't helped by strange cults prophesizing the end. Sadly not a Doors tribute ban, but instead rather violent headcases intent on causing more dark destruction. The story is simple, but surprisingly okay, better told through the banter of Abraham, Van Helsing and Lady Katerina as in the previous entries. There are now six classes available from the start. Protector, your basic tank with heavy armour, shield and sword using exclusively melee attacks. Elementalist, the spellcaster using the four elements to wield destruction. Umbralist, the rogue class able to stealth enemies and also a spellcaster. Logistineer, not as I thought the expert of spitting in an enemy's face, but a hulking great mech suit and a master of weird science. This is the heavy weapons guy with rockets, bombs and a flamethrower to be used. Constructor, an engineer able to build and deploy gun platforms or mobile drone weapons. And finally the bounty hunter, which kind of pales into the background after describing those other classes, as this is the traditional Van Helsing ranged combat class. I have to admit to being overwhelmed when faced with this many classes, but for my main playthrough I went traditional and perhaps boring with the bounty hunter. It just felt right given the character, though Van Helsing the master weird scientist in the super mech suit was actually pretty tempting. Having said that about the classes, I couldn't escape the feeling that all the ranged versions were essentially the same. You need to keep it distant from the enemies and just pile on the damage in whatever form. I understand the desire to present six different classes is pretty awesome, but three highly nuanced and distinct ones would have worked better for me. Hell, even just the ones from the last game. In order to get this game out, it feels like the devs have stripped back some of the guts that existed in Van Helsing 2, or made some bizarre changes like no more healing potions, replaced by a single health mana potion that has a cooldown timer. These feel like a lack of development time more than anything else, and it's a shame that the potential replayability of the game has been cut down with no new game plus. Maybe it'll be added later, and it is present in multiplayer modes, but the lower price point of Van Helsing 3 does make me wonder if this was always the plan all along, and paid for expansions coming, maybe they're not, adding what's missing will be next. I'm probably wrong, and just being conspiratorial, but it's a mighty shame that so much of what made Van Helsing 2 so good is gone or changed. That's not to say the game isn't enjoyable, because the moment to moment gameplay is as fun as ever. The detail in the varied locations is brilliant and makes the city of Borgovia come alive better than ever. Lady Katerina returns of course and her story, as this is the last in the series, gets some closure and is surprisingly poignant. Her and the good Van Helsing share the usual banter throughout their adventures, a hallmark of the series and, if you're like me, a real love-hate feature of the game. The Dark World is usually at odds with the modern culture references spouted by these two. Uh, this could be really annoying if you were seriously into gothic vampire lore, but hey, you're playing a video game, not decoding a grimoire. What is a little grating, though, is just how constant the repartee gets. Not a moment goes by without a pithy remark or a sarcastic put-down. Uh, again, given its low price point, you're probably getting pretty good value here with such a lot of voice acting. But jeez, Katerina and Helsing have verbal diarrhoea of the finest order. At this point, I'd like to bring up phrase number 65 in the reviewer's handbook, which states, If you like the previous two games, then you'll probably like this. If you are casually into those games, then I think the changes that Van Helsing 3 makes probably won't bother you so much, but if you're an ardent fan who has played those two games, then those alterations will stick in your crawl badly, and it'll really suck. It's still fun to go through though, level up and expand your skills, causing utter destruction to a wide range of enemies. The loot itch is still well and truly scratched, with lots of items, weapons and armour to swap out or sell. Yet even here there's a problem, and it's how unkind the UI and levelling up process is. The learning curve is hard, and it's not obvious how or what skills work where. There's a ton of menus and character sheets to get through in order to level up both Van Helsing and Katerina, and the clutter makes this process long and tiresome, despite the end result being actually quite pleasing. It's not game-breaking perhaps, but it's very off-putting to begin with, enough for new players to throw up their hands and walk away. Give it time and you'll grasp it, but I really don't think gamers should be expected to wade through so much clutter in order to level up. 
when you need a rest from that click first, then there's the supplementary quests to complete via your secret lair, sending out minions to complete tasks for more gold and loot. It helps to add a bit more meat to Van Helsing's bones, although you're eating the same meal as last time as this system is pretty much the same for Van Helsing too. But hey, never enough bacon, right? The Tower Defense minigames returns as well, which helps to break up the action. Visually, Van Helsing 3 looks pretty good, with detailed environments that evoke the grimy, miserable and mucky gothic world in all of its forms. It does feel a little bit like the level and art design are on autopilot at times, and you can argue that this feels more like an expansion for Van Helsing 2 than a proper, full-blown sequel. Once again though, that doesn't feel nearly as egregious as perhaps it should, as the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is still strong. The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing 3 is a good looking game, but the lack of features from the previous entries are a really sore point. Allocating skills and levelling up are hindered by a very cluttered UI that would put any newcomer off, and the range of classes feels a little false given how similar some are to each other. The snarky commentary of the main leads may also irritate after a while, but there's also plenty of genuinely funny moments too to liven up what would be a all too serious gothic tale. At its core, Van Helsing 3 feels like a solid game but it's a few updates short of what the trilogy really deserves. Maybe that'll be added later, but this feels too rushed in places, and fans of the Demon Hunter action RPG deserve a little better. 6 out of 10.